Welcome to this week's edition of Revved Up. This week's episode finds us on the road. On the show this week as well, we did pay a visit to the vintage car show. Remember that one? Beautiful stuff. So many classic cars. We shall show you some of that footage. Plus, as always, I mean, we give you the tips. Let you in on what you should do when it comes down to Kampala's roads. And more importantly, towards the end of the show, we don't only show you the cars that you can go out there and buy for your family. We also get you through this car, the experience you should be enjoying if you're driving this very car. Hello, I'm Andrew Kabura, and first, let's show you what is coming up. On this edition of Revved Up. If you frequently travel dusty roads, you have most likely had a clogged windshield washer nozzle at some point in time. Cleaning them is easy and can save you a great deal of hassle on the road. Simply locate the washer nozzle that is obstructed and using a needle, carefully insert it into the nozzle and clear the blockage. Test it out to make sure that it's now working properly. If not, there may be a bigger problem which should be assessed by your mechanic. All right, so the truth is, these are some of the most helpful cars anywhere in the world because they rush the sick to hospital just to uh, sort out the emergencies. But now here on Revved Up, we're saying, please, please try and don't get your car engine into the intensive care. Please don't keep it healthy. Look after your car engine. The answer, use Shell V-Power. Because your car is all about the engine. And like we've said before, you've got to make sure your engine is healthy and running fine for you to enjoy the experience. And also, keep it as durable and in good condition as you can. So go to a petrol station and ask for Shell V-Power today as we go to the future with the futuristic cars. Futuristic vehicles brought to you by Shell V-Power. Chrome-plated grills, a fine glossy finish, plush leather lining every inch of the interior, a digital media receiver. All this is nothing without performance. A great set of wheels is only as good as the engine powering it, and coursing through every great engine are the world's finest motor oils. It's all about the engine. Whatever you drive, whatever the condition, we have the right motor oil for your engine. Visit any Shell service station near you and choose the right oil for your engine. Shell Motor Oils, because it's all about the engine. It seems Mercedes has taken the driverless vehicle concept to the world of public transport with its latest design for a self-driving bus aptly named the Future Bus. It was unveiled earlier this year and actually made a successful 20-kilometer journey in the Netherlands, proving that autonomous travel is a very real possibility for the near future. The vehicle itself has a futuristic aesthetic using black and silver color schemes paired with an angular body shape and enlarged windows to create a simple, modern and comfortable mode of transportation. The actual method behind the self-driven technology relies on the use of cameras, GPS and radar to navigate traffic lights, pedestrians and other obstacles. There are three zones inside the bus so that the process of traveling is as smooth as possible. The zone at the front is a service zone for entering and exiting the vehicle, while the middle zone is specifically for passengers traveling a short distance. At the back, however, is a lounge area made for long distance travelers so that their journey will be comfortable and entertaining. Mercedes claims that this bus will make public transport safer and more efficient. But 
it'll doubtless be some time before everybody makes the switch to self-driving vehicles. It takes a different kind of faith to put your safety in the hands of an autonomous machine. But perhaps future generations will find it laughable that we ever trusted humans to drive us at all. Last Saturday, the annual Vintage and Classic Auto Car Show was held at the Kampala Sheraton Hotel for the fifth time. As a social event, it is regarded as one of the classiest occasions of the year, and with good reason. Families, socialites, and vintage car lovers gathered to take in the dazzling display of classics that stretched out across the lush Sheraton Gardens, while the judges painstakingly analyzed each and every one to determine a winner. Several prestigious families, including the Ruparellias and Wavamunos, entered models from their collections, and it was a treat to see those cars that were well-preserved displayed proudly by their owners. A few standout vehicles were the original Ford Model T, an iconic car that revolutionized the automobile industry, the charming 1959 Austin Triumph, which won a previous award for most appealing car and had spectators vying for photos, the impressive array of Volkswagen Beetles and the visually stunning 1951 Citroen. Welcome to the fifth CBA Vintage and Classic Auto Show here at the Shelaton. This show started yesterday with a procession from Mogas Kireka through the streets of Kampala up to here. On the ground, we have about 80 cars spanning a period between 1927 up to 1991. Different models, different brands everywhere. We have significant entries from different families. We have uh, three cars from the Ruparelia family, two cars from the Wavamuno family, four cars from the Alam family. We have uh, a 1938 Dodge from the Ham Mukasa family, the first entrant in this year, a historical car by all standards. And we are very excited to have all these cars plus a host of many other cars from the different clubs and different individuals. Uh, we usually contact the car owners, those we know. F from the past years, we've been keeping a database. We have over 200 cars in the database. Some are being restored, some are ready, some are not able to participate, but usually we get between 70 and 80 cars participating in the show. Um, then there are others which are referred to us by people who, who know these cars. You know, someone finds on the way, he chases it and says, no, come to the show. Some of those are the ones who come in much later, you know, you saw some came in the morning. Yeah. So, yeah, the judging is ongoing. We are starting to get some results already. And we shall announce the ultimate winner by the evening. Tell us about the procession. I believe that the event really started yesterday with the procession through Kampala. Yeah. That must have been quite a sight. Yeah, yeah. The procession is quite interesting because it tests the car's ability to move, you know, you get a lot of breakdowns here and there, and you know, South carry some others, but it's very fun, you know, the whole people wait along the streets taking pictures, some jump out of cars with iPads. It's very exciting to see cars moving, because many of them think these cars don't move. They think we just want to carry them to the ground. But then many of them were able to come on their own, and it was quite exciting, you know, people coming out of their offices to wait for us as we are passing. Yeah, very exciting show. Tell us uh, just a few of your favorite cars that are here right now that you'd like to uh, see win a prize. I really have a number of favorites, but uh, there are a number of cars that have greatly improved from last year, where the owners have touched them up very well. Like the Wolseley, the, 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 that green and black car, 1938, it's very much improved from last year. There are about two combis down there, which guys have really done, and they are so well done. Uh, obviously, I'm very excited about the historical car because it's the first time it's, it's performing in this show. Not well done yet, but then the family is already taking baby steps into the store. It will believe two, three years going forward, it will be a very good piece. All of these classics deserve recognition for their sheer beauty and timelessness, and they are all winners in their own right. The Vintage and Classic Auto Car Show is an event that must be attended by everyone who claims to love cars. And 
we will certainly be waiting in eager anticipation for next year's edition. Right, so on hot deals this week we, we we focus on a comment on our facebook page which by the way is revved up uganda quick advert uh, from akao patricia abori and she says now the small ones like vitz raum spatio yeah bring those ones i prefer those please that's what she says so i decided to do with checky this week we decided to bring you a couple of options when it comes down to family cars now in case you want to see the options and the price and where they fit into your budget it's very simple go to your browser right now put in checky.co.ug forward slash hot deals checky is ch E K I and trust me you'll see a couple of options I've seen some hatchbacks right behind me so you look at a couple of options on the website and trust me you could get one of those for your family with Jackie Welcome to this week's road review. Now, first of all, first things first, don't mind the attire. We shall come back to this very shortly. Now, every time we talk about road review, we bring you cars that we think should help you in your daily life. So before, we've talked about small cars like those, like the Vitz. Very small, very personal, very efficient, good through the roads. It helps you sort everyday parking problems. But on this week's show, we've decided to focus on slightly bigger cars, specifically for the family. This is a mid-sized SUV. This is the 2008 Touareg. Now, before we talk about the Touareg, I want to let you in on facts like uh, a couple of years ago. This car's production started in 2002. Well, before that, you had three big German automakers coming together and deciding to have sports cars that were also good off the road. So you had Audi, you had Porsche and Volkswagen coming together. And after that, 
with all the structural and engineering differences you'll see in other versions, they came up with the Audi Q7. I'm sure you've seen that. They came up with the Porsche Cayenne and then the Touareg as well from Volkswagen. So this week, this week, we focus on the 2008 version of the Volkswagen Touareg. The Volkswagen Touareg has always been a powerhouse vehicle. It was conceptualized in collaboration with Porsche, who used a similar design for their well-known Cayenne. Originally, the Touareg was a 5-liter diesel V10, but such immense power meant sky-high emissions. And so in 2008, it was replaced by this V6 TDI engine. The acceleration is strong, reaching 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 9.2 seconds and has a top speed of 109 miles per hour. This 5,000 pound vehicle has 280 brake horsepower and is equipped to tow heavy loads or navigate treacherous roads with ease. All right, so we need to first of all explain our beautiful dress code on the show this week. Now the Tuaregs, where this beautiful machine gets its name, the indigenous inhabitants of the Sahara Desert. So today we'll find them in countries like Mali, uh, some are in Libya, you find some in Niger, some parts of Tunisia as well. It's, it's a very big group of folks currently estimated at around 2.5 million, which about 1.5 still speak their indigenous languages. Now the kings or the chiefs wear something like this to show power. This is how you know you're an elder. So what I'm going to do to avoid the fashion police right after now is to throw this away and try and focus on this beautiful machine that by the way is 280 brake horsepower has a V6 in there and uh, it's a 3 liter 2008 version of the Touareg. A Volkswagen Touareg famously towed a Boeing 747 airliner in 2006 demonstrating its incredible strength and power and is regarded as being one of the most capable off-roaders to date. All right, so at the 2006 Paris Motor Show, uh, there was a first lift. There was another first lift in 2007 in New York at the Motor Show for this very edition, the 2008 edition. Uh, but all that aside, what's really more interesting, it is uh, with 2,300 redesigned parts. And by the way, new technological features as well. Inside, Volkswagen once again showcases the painstaking detail and effort that they put into every single one of their cars. The Touareg has an imposing style with sleek black leather coating the seats and an updated array of gadgets for the driver to play with. It is able to make the shift to four-wheel drive easily thanks to the pop-up knobs behind the transmission lever that allow you to select either the high or low range, depending on your situation. Although it seats five, it is not an uncomfortably large vehicle, so it has maneuverability as well. Then you also realize that they have uh, what most of the other cars actually have, but the design and the placing is quite special. For example, you have an extra charging slot in there. And if you're closing it, you just have to press there. Then you can keep most of your things under your armrest. But the way it opens and closes is quite special. But what's more interesting about the 2008 Touareg is uh, how they place some of the buttons for the different functions. For example, the headlights are to the right, it's just a button. You have to press this side and get to the headlights. Uh, if you want to put fuel, I don't have to go below your chair like most of the cars are to find the button. It's just here next to, pretty much next to the speakers uh, on the door itself. Plus, there's a couple of folks who never really give their cars away because they say <laughs> every time you give a car to someone, he alters so many things and how you want them set. Well, I tell you what, uh, the 2008 Touareg has uh, special settings for its seats. It's got buttons. Uh, you can see one, two, three uh, different numbers in there. Now, you can set how your seat should actually be. Of course, according to your leg room, according to your height and everything. And when you give the car away, in case you've given it to someone who's shorter, someone who's taller, when you get back to your car, you just have to press the button. For example, if my setting was one, press the button and you're back to your settings. And you sit comfortably and drive comfortably. And then its key is to the left. I don't know if you've seen most of those cars. Its key is to the left and you have to... 
there we are and uh, it's got a six speed uh, gearbox which goes manual and auto so this is auto the normal basic auto but then you can get here and just and you go manual all right so we've taken the 2008 Toreg for a quick drive on the streets here in Kampala just to see how comfortable it will be for anyone who decides to own it at the moment first of all we've talked about its history so we do expect a sporty feel yes a sporty feel with the car just to see how good it can be so this is 280 brake horsepower that is exactly what we're dealing with meaning if we can get a clear road in Kampala probably we shall try and speed later on but our real focus really, our real focus is to try and take it off-road. So let's try and get it to a place where we actually can speed, get it off the road. It's uh, speedometer here tells me 200 uh, is what its maximum here is. I don't think we can rev that through Kampala or any of the streets here in Kampala. We suddenly have to go according to how most of the cars are going. But the feel itself, the feel, it's very, it's very silky, if that makes sense really. It's very silky in terms of how smooth the gearbox operates here in Kampala. All right, so uh, we now are going off the main road. Uh, and this is really the reason the car was made. So let me get you a couple of facts right. In fact, let me first stop and get you the facts right. You've got tires out there that are 17 inch and then just over eight inches in terms of its ground clearance. Meaning you really shouldn't struggle with so many potholes out there, just up and down. So let's see how comfortable it is. It's got, a, of course, traction control is a basic. So uh, it's something that should always step in and help you with all these new uh, new generation cars. Now this is how comfortable this car can be on roads like this. So this is uh, Maram went try and speed and see just how good its traction is uh, if we don't really skid, uh, if we also don't be in trouble with, uh, you know, handling of the steering wheel when it comes down to roads like this. All right, let's go. Fantastic. I think it kind of felt nice getting off the first few meters. Didn't really feel its struggle with the, the traction, just like I said. All right, just so as we continue enjoying the, the experience with the 2008 Touareg, um, I just want to let you know that we got this car from the Cheki website, which of course is what we've been telling you all these days that you can visit in your browser. That is cheki.co.cg and uh, get this in your parking lot. It's 85 million Uganda shillings. But better still, you can go to the website and find all the other options of cars that, that you want to enjoy. Uh, whether they are for the family, whether it's just down to you being unique, whether it's luxury as well. All those options are on the website. But suddenly, I would advise you guys to go out there and look out for the 2008 Touring. It's a good car. It is German. It's good on and off the roads. It's got piles of technology on the inside. So many things you can do with your dashboard. So many things you can do with your seats. The Volkswagen Touareg is certainly a powerhouse, but it's also so much more than that. It has speed, efficiency, class, and when combined with Volkswagen's unchanging attention to detail, it becomes an elevated vehicle that stands out amongst ordinary SUVs. All right, so there you go. End of the road for us. It's certainly been a very, very good experience for me. And maybe you who is watching at home as well. We want to thank the Nakoma Business Park for giving us shooting space. We certainly have enjoyed our experience here. Yeah. Revda will be back next week. Yes, on Wednesday at exactly 8 p.m. For now, stay revved up. Goodbye. And have a nice time.